Hi there, my name is Thomas. I'm representing today InvestmentExcel.com and welcome to this session about the geometric Brownian motion or the GBM as we call it. We will show how the GBM works on forecasting the returns of a stock and in particular the Alibaba. Uh, limited stock. We will show the stochastic process, process or the stochastic nature of the G GBM and all the nice features it has in terms of simulating um, returns in the future. This video and the Excel workbook are both available on investmentexcel.com and Spotify all right let's start by looking at the GBM which is famously most famously written like this so you have an instant change in the stock governed by a drift and a diffusion the drift being a constant contribution to the return and the diffusion a stochastic contribution to the return. The way to see the return dimension of it is just to divide by S on both sides and you will have the return equals the, the mu times dt plus sigma times the Wiener process dw. This is the classical GBM and it's uh, it's different from the BM, the Brownian motion, which doesn't have the geometric uh, part of it. It's there is no there is no link between the relative return and and the evolution of the, the stock. When we solve this stochastic differential equation, it looks like this. So at any point of time in the future, t, the value of the stock or any other asset is equal to the price today times an exponentialized log return. So the the numbers in here or <coughs> or the part in here is the log return from time zero to time t. So it's not it's it's not for one year or one quarter, it it's from it's a horizon log return, so accumulated log return. And you see again the drift part here and the diffusion part here. And it's very important whenever we simulate that we remember that the thing we simulate on, if we use the original description out here, is the log return. And afterwards we have to exponentialize to achieve or to obtain the simple returns which are the returns that we at the end of the day are interested in. Also note this little technical premise within this parenthesis it's called the uh, Jensen inequality adjustment and it's because that the mu here is assumed to be the annualized the, the, the instant return annualized so in in order in order to make this a simple return the drift here a simple return when we exponentialize we have to make an adjustment which we can uh, which we can approximate by this little uh, funny thing here so both the drift term and the volatility terms they are annualized figures 
of simple returns. All right. Um, yeah, perhaps I should just say that if you would like to see how we go from this to this, you could, for instance, go to Wikipedia where uh, the ETO uh, calculation is showed. Um, and this is a necessary, necessary step in order to solve this equation into this. All right, let's just look at Alibaba. I assume a mu of 10%, a drift of 10%, a annualized volatility of 15%. Start price is 150 in 2018. And we move on 25 years. We simulate 25 years. The way I do it is to split the simulated luck return from the stochastic differential uh, equation that can be luck approximated into the drift and into the diffusion. The drift is constant only with this little uh, 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 change to it, the volatility change. So if I put volatility at zero here, the drift would be 10%. Diffusion, it's a normal um, it's a normal diffusion calibrated from the standard normal distribution where we invert, put in some some randomized probabilities and take out a figure and multiply that with the time scaled standard deviation. So that's that's the the normal uh, Wiener contribution. And this leaves us a total for each year on the luck return. Now for each year, we have to exponentialize to get the simple return, the return that ultimately tells us how much money we we get out. We exponentialize all total returns and translate that into a simulation of the price starting 150. And then we just type by one plus this this one remember we have already exponentialized so no no reason to exponentialize here and we continue now what we have obtained is one stochastic path one sim simulated path and if i ty type f9 i will get a new path and if you look at the, the graph up here you will see the the returns. This is not accumulated return. This is a period returns. So let's just try to type F9 and activate Excel's uh, randomized function, which, as I said, is is used in in the stochastic process. And we'll see it moves nice and arbitrarily or randomly according to the draws from the standard normal distribution. Okay, down here we have the price and we see that the price will never go below zero and that's because it's an exponentialized price and of course that is very nice feature as we know that stocks they have a uh, they have a, a limited principle so the stock can never go below zero it's called limited liability sorry so investor always has a call option with a strike of zero So this is how to build one stochastic path of a stock. And of course, we can just change the assumption of the drift and the volatility to get to generate a new path. And then you might say, what can we use this for? Would it not be more appropriate to have a guess on the drift and the volatility? Yes, for sure. These are very, very critical inputs. What this can be used for is to show to show investors 
risk and return at a, on a given horizon, given these assumptions. This is where the uh, simulation is very strong, because we can go down and at year 2043, in 25 years uh, time, we can go down and make, in this case I've just made 84, I don't know why, 84, but I took 84 draws from the log normal distribution in 25 years, so the a normal distribution with features from from the drift and from the volatility and calculate the density function. So here I get what is called the normal log distribution of actually the log normal distribution. So a normal distribution of the log returns. Those we can see here. And if we'd like to see the distribution in 2043 of the price, we can look at the log normal price distribution. So I just exponentialize the corresponding uh, log returns and this will give me a PDF, a log normal PDF. You can see here how I use the log normal distribution PDF. All these numbers look horrible, but actually it's just the information from here. And here we see how the price is expected to evolve. From these graphs or from these horizon distribution functions we can calculate of course expected return in in percentages and in dollars but we can also calculate risk figures like the standard deviation and with the standard deviation also the value at risk and that really shows that the GBM tool is more than just predicting returns it's also generating a distribution function at a given horizon in, in order to stress test a portfolio and the input might not be correct but then you will just have to to do several inputs so again you start just by having a worst case scenario and a best case scenario and so on so it's it's all about trying to somehow have a functional relationship between some assumptions today and something which happens in a very very unknown future 25 years ahead in this case all right that is the GBM for now. Bye-bye.